I am going to set up this loom for a back to front threading. In order to do so, the first thing you'll need to do is place your rattle in the center. I happen to use big rubber bands to hold this on. Some people will tie it. I can never get a tight enough knot. However, the rubber bands, when looped through, will grip very, very tightly. And that's not moving. I do the same thing to the other end. I just loop it around a couple of, of the nails around the back beam. I will apologize right now for the dogs panting. They have just been playing. Okay, nice and tight. The next thing you'll need to do is take your chains. Okay. All of my heddles are pushed to the side. I am going to undo the top loop holding my chains together. Okay. I am going to slip that chain through. Make sure that I have no twists in my chain through the cross, and I'm just going to set that chain right there. Get the next chain out. And do the same thing. So we, we undo the top loop, holding it so that they don't come undone. Okay. Slip the chain through, flip it over, make sure that cross is even, and I lay it down, okay? As you can see, all this is, is it's just kind of laying down. Now, these two strings are what holds my, hold my leash sticks. My leash sticks will go through here and through each of these chain sections. I put them through typically at the same time for a small project because it's fairly easy for me. Pull this out, pull the string out, open it up, put one in, turn the string so that there's a cross between the two leash sticks. Okay. Put the first leash stick through the back Take the second leash stick, make sure that I've got the cross, and pull it through. Okay. And I'll slide that through, and I'll do the same thing with the next one. I'll put it through the back. Make sure that you've got all of the extra strings separated here. Okay. Slide that through. And then I take the second string, twist it, it's always a twist there, and I'll set that through. I use, I use office clips to hold my leash sticks together. It's always easier for me to do it that way. Okay. Once you have that set, I'm going to move these backwards a little bit, just so that I have some working room. Once you have that set, keep your fingers through so that you're not losing any, any of your cross, and then remove the end pieces. Like so. Once you've got that, then you can undo the rest of the cross. Okay. So the leash sticks, the leash sticks are holding the cross where it needs to be so that you know exactly which string comes next when you're threading. Okay. That one, undo this one. Now for the fun part with the rattle. I know that this is supposed to be approximately 12 inches in the reed. 
Therefore, I'm going to measure out, this is 24 inches total, and this is the 12 inch mark. Since this is the 12 inch mark, we're going to go halfway and halfway. So that means this is the beginning. So I'm going to put that there. I also know that this is supposed to be 24 ends per inch. Each of these is half an inch. Therefore, I need 12 on either side of each loop. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ends. And I'm going to pull it through, separate them out, and I'm going to loop them around that first one. That means I've got 12 on this side and 12 on this side because I simply counted from the top. I did not count from the bottom. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing here all the way across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pull them apart. I am skipping one because we've already got something in that space. Loop it around that one. Now I have four spaces filled. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We are going to continue in this vein for the entire length of this small project. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Skip one and put it through. Please note that every time I am putting uh, the ends around the pin, I am always going in the same direction. You want to make sure that you twist in the same direction so that when you actually start winding it on, nothing twists. It's all the same. Again, I apologize for the dogs panting in the background. They were having a good time this morning. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Notice I'm on my second chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Also notice how I'm very careful. I'm not pulling on these. I'm simply kind of waggling them around to separate them. I'm not pulling because if you pull, then you get uneven tension um, and that makes winding on even more difficult. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, once you have everything looped around appropriately. You can see they're going through the leash sticks just fine. You are going to come to the other side of your loom. Give me just a minute while I get my table set up. You'll come to the other side and we're going to work on winding it on. So, first things first, remove the reed from your last project. Take it out, set it aside. Okay. You want your chains to come over top like so. Smooth them out. Okay. You don't want, you don't necessarily want to comb everything like this. On a small project, it's, it's handy, but it's not necessary. Tension. Pull and use your thumbs and your fingers to straighten it out. Okay. Now that that's straightened out, I'm going to move camera to the floor so that you can see exactly what else I'm doing. Okay, so there are two more pieces of equipment that you need. You will need 
weights. I happen to use two pound weights, one pound weights would be just fine. I have looped a piece of Texol through the end and through a carabiner. I also have a piece of string, just a, a regular boring sugar and cream weight through each of these. Okay. In order to weight these properly, again, straighten out all of your yarns, not, not necessarily by combing them, but by pulling. Okay. Again, tension. Tension is the love of my life. Okay. Wrap the string around and make a loop. Then you take your weight, hook your weight onto it. Okay. That's going to keep the tension while you wind on. Since I have two chains, I have two weights. Okay. Again, use tension to keep everything straight. Wrap the string around to make a loop. And hook that on. Okay? This will give me the tension as I wind everything onto the back beam, holding it all with the proper tension so that I don't have to use the crank and yank method, which, to be honest, I've never been very good at. <laughs> okay, the loom is set, ready to go. I'm going to remove this off to the side. I do have a penchant for rubber bands. And what this is going to do, I'm placing it over top here to make sure that these stay where they're supposed to be. Again, apologies for the dogs. So, some people will take um, a separate uh, dowel uh, and, and loop their, th their threads through that separate dowel. I happen to use the same dowel every time. Uh, go. Um, I'm actually going to loosen this up a bit. I want to be able to bring this all the way up to here. Okay. All right. So now that we've got that, I'm going to start by pulling gently on each of these. <laughs> the weights make it difficult. All right, so I'm going to pull on each, and remember when I put them on, I looped them to the right. So this time, I'm going to loop them to the left, so that as this comes over top of the beam, it's a straight line. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for each group. In the middle of all of this, we have to remember where our... Uh, cords go. Okay, so for this particular one, it actually came slightly unlooped, so I'm going to loop it again. Okay, so that's all it is, it's just a loop. Okay, I'm going to slide the loop on. I'm going to take my next set. I'm going to pull it, twist it to the right, figure out where this one needs to be. And it looks like right there. So I'll put two more loops on. Make sure you grab all of the loops. Don't leave one behind. No string left behind. Okay. I'm going to put that loop on. I know this takes a while, but trust me, doing, doing this slowly and everything little by little, take your time, 
Patience is a virtue when it comes to setting up your loom. Trust me on this one. If you go too fast, you're going to miss something. Okay, so this one, I need two more. There's one. You'll notice I'm, I'm trying to let the tension of the, the current yarns hold that. It's doing pretty well. Okay. We'll pull this up. And loop that. Make sure that you keep sliding, sliding things down. This one comes in. Yep. Two on there. Okay. And I want you to notice, slide this down. For this particular project, I do have six more ends there. So it wasn't exactly. 12 inches, but it was close, um, and that's what we're looking for, is as close as possible to the width of the entire project, okay? And then I'm going to put the last loop on. Oh, that one came undone, too. There we go. Okay, slide this so that it's nice and centered and ready to rock and roll. Make sure that all the... All the yarns are in place and steady, and I think, and that they're not going to catch when I start winding. Okay. We're ready to start winding now. Okay. We have everything set and we are ready to start winding on. I use bamboo sticks to separate my warp. The reason you would want to separate the warp is so that the strings don't end up piling on top of each other and so you can keep even tension. Um, the bamboo sticks came from, uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, Amazon. Um, I, I ordered a bamboo window blind and I simply took the blind apart, and so I have all of these wonderful bamboo sticks uh, in order to separate my warp. For the very first part of the warp, I actually tend to use a piece of corrugated cardboard um, so that I can uh, make sure that all of the knots um, along the top and any, any knots from the nails are evened out. Once this goes around, then I start using the bamboo sticks. Ready? Okay. You don't want to simply start cranking. You want to make sure that you release your brake and then start winding, okay? Once you start winding, you'll notice that the, the leash sticks will probably move forward. You will want to check for any knots that you might have up here. Push the leash sticks back down. Um, when you have an uneven number of, of warp threads up here, uh, you'll probably have it, uh, a single knot tied here. So you want to make sure that those are going to slip through easily. If you feel any catches whatsoever, stop immediately and find out what's catching. If you just keep cranking, you'll break a thread. And that's annoying. <laughs> so we don't want to break any threads. So stop and look. See what your loom is talking to you, so see what see what your loom is saying. Okay, as we get closer to this, I'm going to simply push this into uh, the groove here, 
so that I can continue cranking and the yarn travels around the cardboard. All right, I don't know if you can see from the back end, but our weights are coming up towards the top of the loom and they are now at the top of the loom. Okay, This is a good time for me to put a bamboo stick in to start separating the warp that way. And then we move the weights. You do this the same way you put them on. You remove one weight, remove the string, straighten the yarns, Put the string back on and clip your weight back on. You'll do that for both of them and you will then continue on winding on until everything is on. Every probably half turn to full turn you will want to put in a bamboo stick to keep these warp threads separated. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I do love how the weights really help keep the tension Remember, I'm stopping every once in a while to add a bamboo stick. To, to straighten out the threads. Notice how I'm not actually combing the threads. I'm simply using a pulling technique here. And this will be the last one. And again, tension keeps that loop on. Look at that. So that'll hang nicely. Tension, tension, tension. Tension is your friend here. Now, just because I say tension does not mean that you need to um, yank and, and pull and, and really, you don't want to tear any of the threads, but you do want to keep an even, an even pressure tension on these threads. Um, this is 100% cotton. Um, so it's a fairly sturdy warp. Um, I'm using 8-2 cotton. What we're doing here is we're going to make some washcloths. Uh, waffle weave, one of my favorite structures. I love waffle weave. I just do. <laughs> um, this particular loom is a four harness um, loom. You can make waffle weave washcloths using a four harness, a six harness, or an eight harness, or even more loom, it doesn't matter. The more harnesses you use, the deeper the waffle is going to be, the more it will shrink and the more it will gather water for you. So we have reweighted that. Sorry for the dogs. We'll wind again. We're going to put another bamboo stick in. Another bamboo stick to keep the warp thread separated. And that's about as far as I want to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these ends so that they are even. And then we're going to start uh, threading the loom.